Hello YouTube friends. I mentioned in the video that I did about moving uh, everything up to the pink room that I had another little tutorial for you that was a bit like book binding. So I'm going to put this tutorial that I'm going to do with you now on the, uh, the tutorial slot which has kind of become Saturday morning, Saturday midday. And this is just a quick little simple one. I saw this years ago somewhere and it's just such a good idea. Because, you know, these days when you get sent um, a birthday card or a Christmas card, sometimes they're, you know, they're very lovely and the sentiment's nice and you can throw them away uh, after the event is over. But sometimes they're so lovely, so lovely. I get quite a lot of homemade cards, beautiful, beautiful cards that are handmade by, um, by people. And you don't want to throw those away. And also, when I was searching out all the cards for this, to show you this tutorial, I found quite a few that my mum had made. She was a proper little card maker. And so I can't throw those away. I don't want to throw those away, but I also don't want to keep them in a cluttered up sort of way. So I'm going to show you how, very simply, you can make um, a little way of storing them. It's not a book. It is a book. It's like a book. <laughs> And that's what we're going to do now. Now, I've just been for a scout around and I've found all sorts of bits of cardboard because that's what we're going to use. One of my favourite sources of cardboard is the back of pads of paper. And that's what this one is. However, cereal boxes. Now, I don't really eat a right lot of cereals. And I was worried when I was doing this, that I wasn't going to be able to find a cereal packet. But I have these oats that I've taken out of here. And so this is cereal packet cardboard which is probably about perfect for this uh, for this project. So there's that one. And then here I've got the card that the the notice board. I've got a cork board for the pink room that came. I'll put it up. I'll show you uh, in the pink room video another one. And this is the big huge piece of card that came from there. Now this isn't great card for most craft purposes, not really, because this corrugated card bends. Uh, you know, that corrugation makes it bend. So it's great for this though, because this is uh, something quite instant. I just, hang on, I'll just rip this apart. That took ages. That was very well packaged. It's a huge piece of card though. Very, very big. So, right, what are we doing then? So I've sorted out these cards here. These are, a, they were, I, it wasn't hard to find. There was piles of them all over the place. So this is a big load of Christmas cards from the last couple of years. And, and I say a couple of years because I keep the beautiful ones that are uh, the handmade ones. Just the really, really lovely ones that are handmade um, by my friends. I keep those. Because why would you throw them away? Little tiny pieces of works of art. I think I'm going to use this box first. Okay, so I'm going to find the bit where it's stuck together here and just deconstruct the box. Now, this part here is actually pretty useful because that could be the spine of my book. So just for ease I'm just going to cut all the flaps off. So I'm going to turn it inside out now. Now at this point if you wanted to decorate this, now's your time to run Riot and decorate it. Uh, I'm not going to. Just for this, the purposes of this little video, I'm not going to do that. I am going to let Norma in though. Just a minute. So just as an aside, now that I've got everything off this table in the big pink, in the little pink bedroom upstairs and I've got this empty, so the door's been open to the upstairs a lot because I've been going up and downstairs a lot. So this morning, 
when I went up to get something from the pink room. Three cats asleep on my bed. Cats aren't allowed upstairs. <laughs> now, Norma, it's the Norma show. We're going to do a video. Are you going to settle? Or are you just going to annoy everybody? Oh, okay. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll just get her a chair. There you are, Norma. That's for you. You stay there now. Like as if. Okay, then. So let's say you've got a lot of cards that are all from one occasion. These are uh, quite a lot of these are from my 60th birthday. It was a while ago, three years. Uh, however, I've kept all of these uh, and there's quite a lot more as well because why wouldn't you? The spine of this book then, they're all going to end up in here like so. And the spine of this book is too big. Are we going to mind about that? No, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going to mind about that because it might be. These are the handmade cards from the last couple of Christmases. So how about, how would it be if I put them both in there? Yeah, that's perfect. That is absolutely perfect. Okay, so that's how they work. Like this on here. And I'm going to get the tallest card and make my book just a tiny smidging taller than the tallest card. None of this is going to be measured. Oh, come on, Nor. <laughs> None of this is going to be measured. You know me by now. That's the tallest card there. And the widest card is this one. And so that is the widest card there. So I've made those marks like that. And now I'm going to cut. You could cut them with scissors. I'm not going to get too precious about this book. It's not a book, really. It's just a storage system. OK, so we're going to cut that there, like so. That's the... And I'm going to cut exactly the same size off the other size. I'll just use the piece I... I'll just use the piece I cut off as a guide. So it's going to be there, like so. And then we'll cut the height. That's about an inch off the top of this box, just a tiny bit more. So that's the size of my cover then. So what do you do next? I'm just going to pop in here as a little continuity problem. I somehow failed to film the little bit that shows you about cutting the spine. So I've just mocked this one up. When the next time you see the book I'm making, it will have the spine cut out. What's important, this is just a piece of paper to illustrate it. I don't know what happened to that piece of film. What's important now is on this spine is to mark these two bits here. And then I'm going to cut them out. So I'm going to cut here and here. And the same here and here. And it's just occurred to me that if you want to reinforce the spine, you could simply fold those over. But I cut mine in half. You'll see in a minute. But this is an important little thing that I forgot to film when I was doing it. So I'm going to stop that now, insert that little piece of film, and then we'll get on with the next part. Sorry. So I have this now. But one of the great things about thinking on your feet and making your mind up as you go along and not being too rigidly stuck to ideas is that you can change your mind. Now, when I was tidying out the pink room, don't you always find things that you'd forgotten you had? Well, I've got a stack of this fantastic 
handmade paper from Thailand that I bought years and years and years ago. I've got quite a few sheets of this. I've used it for all sorts of things. So I am going to cover the cover of this book with it so that we get rid of the Jordans. But also we're going to do another really important thing. Having decided I don't like how thick that is, I'm actually going to cut it in half, shock horror, and stick it back together again. So I've cut that now, I'm going to stick it back together again so that it's actually narrower. That is going to be so much better. But in covering this with paper, it will strengthen it so beautifully. So I'm going to do that now. That's exactly what I'm going to do. And I'll do it with you overhead so that you can see what I'm doing. I might even speed it up. When I was looking through these cards, I f and I was finding all sorts of amazing handmade cards, I found this one. <laughs> and this one, is, I'm going to embarrass my son now, this is from my son. And inside it, it's a lovely, lovely greeting here. But he, and it was for my 60th birthday. And he wrote 60 reasons why mum is good. Some of them are so funny. So while you watch this in speed it up mode, I will read some of them to you <laughs> as a little voiceover. Just the good ones. <laughs> Sorry, Owen. <laughs> OK. Right, let's get on and do that then, shall we? 60 reasons mum is good. She has fundamental math skills. She has a good handshake. Good music taste. Doesn't speak French. She's very creative. Never would allow me to starve. She owns clean socks. She owns enough mugs for everyone. She's probably good at swimming. She's quite sensible. Great at baking. Hardly ever watches TV. Is very rarely racist. <laughs> Votes Labour. Has natural beauty. All her fingers and toes are intact. She has more Instagram followers than me. A strong Lord of the Rings knowledge. Great at driving. Hates basic people. Has a big TV. Raised me. She's moderately funny. She has cats. She has good style. She makes excellent flan. She loves minimal birthday card designs. Her kids love her. She has crafty hands, good hair, great taste in music. Hates camping. She has a normal shoe size. She's very loving. She has a full fridge. She's colour coordinated. She is a great public speaker and very quotable. She has travelled the world <laughs> and fully embraced the 21st century. <laughs> she loves butter as much as me. She is mostly organic and she is a world-class knitter. Thanks Owen. mostly organic, has a big TV. I'm not good at swimming and I do like camping. Just never go. <laughs> okay then, so it's sitting there now between uh, two pieces of non-sticky sort of paper and a couple of bricks. Uh, say hi to Norma, she's just sitting there. I think people come into my house sometimes and think, why has Kate got two bricks on the windowsill? It's because I need heavy weight sometimes. So while all of that is drying, 
and that paper is very 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 absorbent so it's taken uh, a lot more glue than I expected and it's soaked all the glue in uh, to this slight like blotting paper so we'll let that dry completely and you can see that I reinforced the uh, spine part of it quite well while I was uh, while I was making that it's still it's not my best beautiful book binding that's not what it, this is this is just a means of keeping these little cards all in one place so while that's drying then we can do the next thing which is to prepare the cards now the two pieces with the spine in the middle that bit in the middle I've just measured it it's eight and a half centimeters there's probably something nice in inches as well, but it's eight and a half centimetres and I'm going to make myself a little template out of this card that I cut off. So if you find the middle of the card then, I'll do this one here. Um, that one is nine centimetres, so that's the middle there. Let's make a bigger mark there. So that's the middle of the card. That's the middle of my template. What I could simply do is mark here and here on the card, like so, here and here. And actually, what you could do is just cut like so, so that, whoops a daisy, can't see the mark, so that when you open it out, It's got a tiny cut mark like that. That's going to be important for later on there. So if it's a little tiny thin card like that, obviously that is smaller than my template size by a little bit, half an inch or so. That's fine. You don't need to cut that one. Just leave that one exactly as is. So that's what I'm going to do now. I am going to cut the spines of all of these cards. Well, it's ages later now, a few hours, and this cover is dry. All the end papers and the, I did a specially reinforced spine. Dry, all sorted. That bit that I forgot to show you, me cutting, beautiful. All the cards that I want to put in there, I've made the... the cuts where I need to which are the same size as the spine and now it's just a question of how to attach them. Now there's several ways of doing this. Uh, you can use elastic bands if you've got some small colourful elastic bands. I've only got these really big ones and these are too big I've tried uh, and they just wobble around. So if, but if you had some nice some smaller more colourful you know colourful pretty elastic bands you could just use elastic bands and the whole spine would be stripy with elastic bands and all the cards would be held in place. I've got all these lovely colours of string. These are the strings that I use to bind the uh, journals that I made um, a, a couple of weeks ago. So I'm going to use these then and uh, show you how I do the spines that way. All right, I think you can guess what I'm about to do. I'm going to put my string through the card so that it's like that. And then around the outside of the book, I'll try and do this your way so that you can see what I'm doing. And it's a simple question of then tying a square knot. I'm going to tie a reef knot right over left and under. And this is where it would be kind of helpful to have another person. Someone who can put their finger on the knot for you. Right over left and under, left over right and under. But I haven't got that. And it's a struggle, but it, you'll get on much, much quicker if you have someone who can help you do this. Okay, so that's the first one tied in. And I'm going to just leave the string... Uh, hanging like that and then I'm just going to keep going. 
make sure that they're all the right way up. Yep. So I'll catch you at the end of this process when I've tied them all. Well, that took a long time. <laughs> it's done now. I've left all the strings here because I quite like how they look. And inside now are all the cards. I love that one. <laughs> are all the cards here. Whenever I want to have a look at them, read them, they're all there. Safely kept in one place. This was the cereal box. This one. And then I made uh, another one for some smaller cards that I had. And this one is uh, the stiffer cardboard. I also made one with the Amazon cardboard. This one's not so great. It's You can see it's a little bit uh, bendy. However, if all I want to do is keep uh, these cards in there, volume three, then it will work perfectly. Well, this one's my favourite. Not for the cover or anything, but for the lovely cards I've got inside it. These are some fantastic handmade cards by my friends and family. Uh, they're absolutely lovely. And it's really nice now to have them all in one place so that I can remember each one of these fantastic cards. So there you go, guys. That was a bit longer video than I hoped it would be. And I thought this might be quite quick, but it's taken me forever to do. And that's probably because of all the knots. I'm not very good at tying knots on my own. Imagine, though, if you had a child whose second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth birthday, you could make all these books... You could put a big number seven on the front cover and then that would be all the seventh birthday cards for that kid. Or if you had um, a special event, an anniversary, and you got lots of beautiful cards for the anniversary, you could make your book, you could make your cover really gorgeous. Maybe use some of the wrapping paper that some of the gifts came in. That's a nice idea. I think you bespoke this any way that you like, but for me, this is a terribly simple idea. Try the elastic bands idea. Try as well if you want to. Thread some beads onto here if you want to. You get as creative as you like, but for me, that now, well, they'll go on my shelf now and they won't annoy me by being piles of cards that are falling about all over the place. And that then is a wrap. <laughs> I'll see you next time with uh, some more. I've got another idea for a books thing that I would like to do with you. Um, but then perhaps we'll get back to some sewing as well because I've got a sewing one as well. So stay tuned. Oh, just before I go, for those of you who are still watching, pop over to the post about the pink room and the giveaway and add on there your name, where you're from and the choice of cards that you would like because that's the post that I'm going to do the, the random comment generator from. If you post on here, you, you won't be included in that, in that draw. And there's about 800 comments so far, so it's absolutely brilliant. We might draw more than one um, because, you know, it's been such a popular giveaway. It's been great. Catch you next time. And uh, thanks very much for watching. See you soon. Bye now.